On the breakfast, traffic situation according to authorities indicates that 95% of transportation is done by road for a city over 22 million residents. How safe is our water transportation system? And what is the capacity of the state waterways? Also on the breakfast, Funke at Kindele has been unveiled as a running mate of Olajide. Adedeonwo for Lagos State Governorship polls. And also, do not forget, we'll be going through today's papers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. And uh, the holiday has ended, so I hope your work, the, all of the enjoyment and celebration has come to an end. Definitely, whatever has a beginning would always have an end. It can be seen with the traffic situation, as everyone is going back to work and going about their businesses. What's well, a good thing? We're always here, never a holiday. As always, we start off with a top trending conversation. And number one for us this morning is that Nigerians are reacting as the People's Democratic Party. Here in Lagos State, uh, unveils Funke Akindele as a deputy governor. Now, a lot of you would know Funke. I mean, we don't even have to go into the nine yards of the story. But um, very disappointing, I would say, is the kind of comments that has um, you know, generated, has been generated or the reactions and feelers that were getting from Nigerians and especially Lagosians talking about um, the fact that you have Funke Akindele. I mean, we, we need to go beyond all of that. So yes, uh, some comments you hear some people say, hey, you need to go and fix your marriage. One who cannot fix her home is someone who's um, you know, coming to talk about becoming a deputy governor of a state. Now, that's mostly the comment that has dominated the space and all of the reaction and feelings that you have got, you would get. Uh, it's a good thing because prior to this time, there were several rumors and what have you, I mean, you know, uh, the marriage situation. But she's come out and she has also um, uh, really stated categorically that she will be running for that particular office. She stated her interest, her concern, and how, how, how that has started. And to be very, very realistic right here, without any sentiment and bias, it's that everyone has a right, including myself, seated here. I do have a right. As a matter of fact, within the Constitution, as long as, you know, um, I do not contravene the law, it is within my capacity. Uh, to say, hey, I want to become a governor, I want to become a uh, deputy governor, or, of course, the position of a deputy governor is usually nominated. So, but the question has been, uh, why is she venturing into all of that? And nobody's talking about uh, capacity. Everybody seems to be saying, hey, what business does movie and acting, I mean, and, you know, governance, I mean, for a party as the People's Democratic Party? It would be crux of a conversation. How dare you say you would pick the likes of Funke Akindele to be a running mate, then it's, it might just be a big blow for the party, especially when the party is saying, hey, we're coming out as an opposition, you know, to take over the state in 2023. But let's not forget, like I mentioned, it's within the constitution. You have a right to vote and be voted for. And if you have uh, Oladi Jide, who is, uh, you know, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, saying that he's picked, uh, he's picked uh, Funke as a running mate, then and that's it. Because everyone has a right to vote and be voted for. It would just be uh, dependent on the people uh, on the day of the elections to decide whether or not they want this person. So it's okay for all of the sentiment. But let's not forget that. Um, I mean, she's not acting contrary to the Constitution. She's not, she's not done anything wrong. So it's normal. It's just natural. And all of the issues that have been raised, for instance, the issue of failed marriage, you're not able to put your, home, your, your house together, uh, you're an actor. We have seen actors who have also uh, ventured into politics, especially in Lagos State. We talk about the likes of Desmond Elliott, uh, a lawmaker. So, so, I mean, so what's different? But 
let's just uh, you know allow that slide and let's not also forget the fact that I mean Funke Akindele has not committed any crime if she was nominated she accepted it and she has decided then it's dependent on you the people on the day of the election to decide who becomes um, you know the ruling party I mean who governs the affairs of the people let's not forget that really the number one motive for every political party is that they win an election and the control government and so let's w see what happens uh, with the People's Democratic Party right here in Lagos State. It will be the crux of a conversation as we proceed in the course of the day. All right, we'll move away from that. Another one uh, talks about the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He says that he is eager to leave because being a President of the Federal Republic is a, is a difficult job. It's been tough being the President. And, and, and let's even, for once, reason with the President. Let's reason with him. Do you think it's easy to be the number one citizen of a country as Nigeria? As complex as he would be, you think it's an easy job. It's not an easy job. So if the President says, uh, hey, I'm tired. <laughs> he, he actually didn't even say he's tired. But he's saying he's eager to go. And if you look at the word eager, if you want to look that up, it talks about willingness, you know, very strong will to do something. Some people have queried, you know, the president's statement. He's talked about a lot. Uh, the fact that he's willing to leave, he said, being in charge of the country's affair has been tough and that he's eager to leave office. Buhari said this when he hosted some governors, legislatures, and all progressive Congress chieftain at a Dara, in his Dara home in Katsina, I mean, following uh, the, the celebration that Ida al Kabir holiday in Katsina. And he said that he would do his best before handing over power to the winner of the 2023 presidential elections. And the story... Um, will not end here. The story continues, but uh, we, we just need to just leave it at what it is. Um, it's okay. First of all, you also need to understand that it's, it's, not, it's not an easy job to be the number one citizen of a country. It takes a lot. You're talking about a country where you have different concerns. I mean, there are a lot of issues, security issues, especially when the president in 2015 had promised Nigerians that uh, the security situation of the country will be sorted out. I mean, look at that. And, and, and then you look at the current reality. What are we faced with? It, it would be a tough job for Mr. President. If, if I were in his shoes, it would be difficult. It's, it's more like you, you, you said to your daughter, I would get you chocolates before I get home, X, Y, Z, make promises and commitment to your family. And at the end of the day, uh, you weren't able to live up to the expectation. What do you expect? It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. Uh, so yes. Uh, you also made commitment that, hey, you know, we're going to tackle corruption. But people have seen it in different dimensions. It feels like you might just be with a certain set of persons you have favorites in the family system. And that's what the president is faced with. So it's okay to cut the president some slack. Uh, that uh, it's a difficult situation. It's a difficult situation for him to be in. But if it's really eager to leave, I mean, something that, because if you look at the uh, definition of uh, eager, you want to look at a uh, will, strong will to do something. If the president really wants to leave, it's not difficult. He can tender his resignation and that's it. So it might just be some semantics that the president is just putting on that statement. Because if he's really tired and he's overwhelmed or he can't continue, he can go away. You would also want to say that if, even if he doesn't even say, I'm going to put on uh, I'm going to sign the letter of resignation and attend my resignation. Then there, sh there should be a vote of confidence that should help him, you know, speed up the process. So in all of this, is the president really willing or eager to leave? Or he would have to leave when it's time? Uh, that's it this morning. But we move away from that uh, and look at the fact that Arek Bashola has blamed NSAS for the prison attack. Uh, we know the prison attack situation where uh, the Kujir Correctional Center was attacked. And there have been a lot of questions that we have not gotten answers to. Question as to whether it was pre-planned, premeditated, looking at the current situation and the happenings. But can you say that the NSAS? Well, let's look at the ideology behind NSAS, uh, the protests that happened. 
it was really about ending police brutality. And the people got to a point where they say, hey, and up until this moment, as we speak, nothing has really changed because you still have constantly, every other time, police officers, those who are supposed to protect the people and those who are supposed to be friends with the people, you know, maltreating the people, manhandling the people in the course of discharging their duty. Once upon a time, sometime last year, I witnessed a police officer, you know, putting out live... He, he shot him, he shot randomly, I don't know where he was shooting. And I could not even get over, you know, all of that memory and experience. It was really scary. Just imagine that the bullet could hit anyone. That's what we're talking about. So how do you blame NSAS for the attack, uh, the prison attack? How, what is the correlation? It doesn't really, really, make any sense i don't see any connection but if you see any connection then it's okay to bring it to the fore and let's talk about it but um it feels like we live in a system and a climb where there's constant blame game nobody's willing and uh decisive to say hey we're taking responsibility for what it is so there's there's a there's a difference uh, some persons have said that this government the current government is in bed with what's going on uh, when you have this t terrorist terrorizing lives and properties and all that's going on. It's, it's, it's some kind of connection. There, there might just be some kind of relationship right here with the government and these group of persons who have decided to ensure that the lives of the people are no longer safe and this terror and this attack. So um, I'm, I'm trying to understand where Nigerians who are not um, armed took to the streets in different parts of uh, the country to say, hey, we are tired of all that's going on. We need you to end this brutality. End it. Please, the slogan at the end of the year of, you know, the police, the Nigerian police is that police is your friend. Really, is the police your friend? When you see a police officer, do you feel that, you know, you have a relationship with them? It's a question that I'm asking. But that's it. And uh, just before we move away to... Uh, just before we move away, uh, you also have uh, the uh, Feni Ferry leaders backing Peter Obi. It's quite interesting because for the fact that you have a spin, a clamor, a lot of persons feel very dissatisfied. And in 2015, dissatisfaction was on top of the burner, front burner. And so that's why you had the emergence of the All Progressive Congress because you had different forces coming together uh, to form a force, which is the APC. But in 2023, we have seen Nigerians very disgruntled, uh, dissatisfied with the status quo. Um, th there's a lot going on. And without the fact that you say Nigerians, if you are a Nigerian or you live in Nigeria, then you can tell one way or the other. You want to look at the cost of living, the harsh economic situation. You want to talk about insecurity. What else do you want to talk about? The ease of doing business. What exactly is going on? But um, the argument over time has been that the Labour Party, uh, prior to this time, you had Peter Obi, who was in the All Progressive Congress, and that wasn't going to be the case. The argument has been power should actually go back to the South. What part of the South? Some people say it's the Southeast, and Peter Obi is actually from the Southeast. A uh, very um, wise decision, because if you look at the Electoral Act, if he had continued uh, with his ambition uh, to contest that election, eventually not making it, then he wouldn't have or stand any chance, you know, to vie under any political party. So first of all, it was very brilliant of him to have left the People's Democratic Party and then have him in the Labour Party. The question now has been, do you have the Labour Party as a party that has a structure? People talk about structure every other time to win an election. Because for every political party, I mean, the sole purpose you have political party existing is that they grab power, the win an election and the rule. That's the essence of political party. So for the Labour Party, do they have what it takes? People have criticized it. It's not a popular party. If you look at the different states of the Federation, do they have what it takes? But something different might just be going on from the fact that you have people who are saying, hey, we're ready to you know, put out fin uh, financial support. We're ready to chunk out resources, the lean resources that we don't have uh, to support a candidate. And 
despite not even paying attention to whether he's from a certain region. It's very commendable. Uh, some people have said that the Afeni Ferry saying that they're back in Pitaobi is a plus and might just be a taut force that doesn't necessarily need an external force, a force of different structure to come together. But the fact that you have the force of Nigerians in different strata. But that's the size of a conversation this morning on a top trending. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, the front pages of a national daily. Please stay with us.